Hey there, Rabbi Rich, and today, boy, we have a good stuff for you. This is a great potential buy. Uh, it is the Bank of Nova Scotia. Now, the Bank of Nova Scotia, for those of you who do not like Latin, is the Bank of New Scotland, I guess, uh, or Scotia Bank is what they usually call it. Uh, ticker symbol is BNS. Now, this company is a bank, a Canadian bank, and they are active in, you know, typical banking activities loan, personal loans, mortgages, corporate credit. Uh, they also have a, a trading platform called Scotia iTrade. And they are also positioned throughout um, several countries. They're mainly focused in, on Canada, but they also have some investments in the United States. And I've drawn in there symbol like with one half of the world kind of shaded in because they have really spread themselves throughout the Western Hemisphere. I, they also have investments in uh, Chile, Peru, Colombia, Mexico, and the Caribbean. So they are really trying to take over the Western Hemisphere as far as banks go. Um, I don't know if it'll work out for them or not, but uh, they're still a very interesting banking company. As far as banks go, I don't know if banks are very interesting, but aside from the interest that they pay. So anyways, now, the price is currently at $73.17 Canadian. That gives it a PE ratio of 10.9, uh, which is very cheap, and a forward PE ratio is estimated 9.9. Uh, the, you know, the average stock in the market is typically um, somewhere between 18 and 22 for a price to earnings ratio. Uh, maybe this is an old bank and so people have, aren't as excited about it, but it is uh, much cheaper than that. And it's got a price to book ratio of 1.3, which is also very cheap. But if you're looking at like Warren Buffett, he would buy his own company back uh, anytime the price to book ratio fell below 1.2. 1.3 is very close to that. So very uh, reasonable price for this company. Uh, maybe a very cheap price. Uh, it has a dividend at 4.8%, which they just uh, raised their dividend. So 4.8%, uh, it's a growing dividend. Uh, this bank's been around for a long time and its dividend, uh, like all the Canadian banks, their dividends are very robust and uh, usually grow. Um, it has a five-year growth rate of about 6.4%. So, uh, why do I think this stock is cheap and what are its positive and negative kind of uh, theses on it? Well, why do I think it's cheap? The one reason is they just announced their earnings recently and they have, uh, low, their earnings are a bit lower than they were in the past. So that shows, you know, their price to earnings would be a little bit different because their earnings have dropped. So it might be, people would say, oh, their earnings have dropped. Maybe it's time to get out. So their, their prices, share prices dropped a little bit. Um, also their, but their price to, or their uh, asset value, basically their equity value has increased. And so I think the intrinsic value of this company is actually um, still should go up relative to what it was uh, like last quarter for say per se but uh, the stock price is likely going to have downward pressure because the earnings have dropped and uh, people are worried about that so um, I think it's cheap right now that's basically what I, what I see I think this is quite cheap it's probably the cheapest has been in uh, you know more than five years anyways um, just like it's like many of the Canadian banks are uh, a lot lower value than traditionally. Uh, even things like CIBC is like over 20 years, it's never been this cheap, uh, or it hasn't been when it got down in December, like into the $100 range. But uh, Scotiabank is also very cheap at the moment, I think. Now, it, the positive thesis on this company, uh, aside from its very cheap price, well, uh, Scotiabank, um, I see it as because it's one of the Canadian banks, I see it as a very safe investment because uh, if you're not aware the Canadian banks they have to do a stress test on their business every once in a while just to make sure that they are not um, stretching themselves into areas where they could uh, risk the ability to handle a big financial crisis or a sector kind of meltdown almost so like if oil 
prices collapsed or if uh, the housing market had major issues, they all have to position themselves and invest in a way um, that really doesn't allow the banks to fail. And so this has made the Canadian banks very safe. Um, it has kind of reduced their ability to invest in a more risky or higher return kind of uh, adventures. So that's why you'll see some other banks like in the US uh, maybe perform better for growth rate, but they might have a lot more risk. You know, they might go bankrupt at some point. So that's another positive. Um, the other thing about this is they are, I, th I see them involved, especially in South America and throughout uh, like the Caribbean. Um, I don't know if this will play out, how it will play out exactly, but I do see a lot of potential, even for countries like Peru, for example, when I was there, you could just see a lot of uh, potential ways that the country could improve itself and the people seem to be willing and to really try and uh, work hard. So you could see a lot of potential for the country and to have a banking, you know, strong banking presence uh, at that point, you could see the bank potentially benefiting from that. So that's just a one example. Um, and yeah, so those are my main uh, positive arguments for it. Uh, additionally, you know, growing dividend uh, and at 4.8%, uh, you know, you could leave your money in there for a long time, even in like a recession, and you'd probably end up doing quite well in the next 15 years. Um, so, what, but what's the negative side of this? Well, I think the negative side to any major bank these days is they, they have a lot of brick and mortar stores. So if a huge trend goes towards online banking, you could see them have to uh, rejig their business a lot to try and keep up with that trend. I think they are already focusing a little bit on that anyways. And I do see a lot of the major banks um, already having the potential to shift towards mobile platforms anyways and maybe reduce the tight banks. So I don't know that that's a huge threat, but that's probably one that I would say is a threat generally to the banking industry. Um, again, a huge downturn. I don't see that as a big issue because they do do stress tests. So if the Bank of Nova Scotia or any Canadian bank fails, you probably see a lot of other banks fail and uh, you know then you probably see a lot of stocks everywhere fail. So that's just one kind of uh, uh, negative side to it. And I, I suppose because they're also invested in places like South America or Central America, you could end up with countries um, that might have all of a sudden uh, a real downside to them. Like the, the government could be like Venezuela in which they couldn't control their own you know, currency and you have all sorts of um, financial problems. But uh, they're not currently in those situations um, and they have been spread out through several countries and their main banking is not necessarily there in South America or Central America. So they might, I, I can see it as a downside, but I don't know that it's uh, that big of a downside. And then aside from that, um, probably the one of the worst things I see about this is its five-year growth rate at 6.4%. Now, most banks are in Canada are like around 9%. So this is the lowest uh, growth in any bank for the major five banks in Canada. So that's kind of the one downside I see the Bank of Nova Scotia. Um, so as far as me, uh, I kind of see this as a very cheap stock, uh, very good dividend, uh, very nice potential if you, you, someone was to buy. But I personally w won't, don't think I would call this as a hold. I wouldn't invest in it because I see better investments in the bank industry. If I was to invest in banks, CIBC is probably cheaper. And if I wanted more growth for like uh, my actual uh, appreciation of the stock value, I would say, you know, something like TD is probably if they're growing at like over 10%. So that's probably a faster growing um, uh, stock. So I would, the biggest problem I have is there's probably better choices within the same kind of industry, but uh, I do see Bank of Nova Scotia as uh, a reasonably good bank, so with a good dividend. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you guys think Bank of Nova Scotia is much better than CIBC, or do you guys think um, you know this this is you know just a waste of time to even think about Bank of Nova Scotia? Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, um, that's my thoughts. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.